research presented uh, at today's press briefing is embargoed until 12.01 a.m. Monday, it's tomorrow. Uh, today's uh, featured studies will present findings that focus on the reason that we are oncology professionals. That is focusing on our patients, what they experience, and how we can improve their outcomes uh, and protect their bodies against future risk. Um, I'm Nick Vogelzang. I am the uh, official ASCO representative for the Cancer Communications Committee. I'm also a practicing medical oncologist at the Comprehensive Cancer Centers of Nevada, member of the U.S. Oncology Research Executive Committee, and uh, I'm, I'm really honored to be in this position this year. The first results uh, of the, uh, the first presentation will be from a cooperative group study. Many of you know that uh, the federal government, through our taxpayers, support research. And this is a important phase three trial conducted um, to design, to ask the question, are the newer agents uh, better than the old agents? It's sort of like asking the question, is uh, Bryce Harper better than Derek Jeter? I'm not sure we'll have an answer in that question, but I think Hope will be able to answer the question that uh, she set out to answer, to set out to answer the question she set out to ask. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks very much, uh, and thanks for coming uh, this morning. Uh, breast cancer is the most common malignancy in women in the United States, and as you know, 20 to 30 percent of women who are diagnosed with early stage disease will eventually relapse uh, with metastatic breast cancer, receive chemotherapy at some point, and die of their disease. In addition, about 10 percent, 5 to 10 percent of patients will be diagnosed with metastatic disease at initial presentation. We set out to try and compare chemotherapy regimens to see whether or not we could improve outcome for women with metastatic breast cancer because of the development of new chemotherapy agents targeting a process in cell division that is controlled by microtubules. Based on input from our sponsors, who are uh, marketing these drugs and had created them, uh, and from published studies, as well as our hypothesis that the novel agents at these doses and schedules would provide superior efficacy to our standard agent, we designed this trial. Our standard at the time, and continuing until now, was weekly paclitaxel, and based on the results from ECOG 2100 that had combined weekly paclitaxel with bevacizumab, we used that as our control arm. That study, as you recall, showed improved response rates and progression-free survival when bevacizumab was added to this dose and schedule of weekly paclitaxel compared to paclitaxel alone. Our experimental arms were designed to be compared individually to paclitaxel, uh, with the endpoint of looking for superiority of each experimental arm to the control. NAB paclitaxel was experimental arm one at 150 milligrams per meter squared combined with bevacizumab. The second experimental arm was ixabepalone, an apothalone analog, given at 16 milligrams per meter squared for three out of every four weeks as well. The all drugs were given for three out of every four weeks to allow patients to recover on that fourth week from toxicity. Patients could discontinue chemotherapy and continue bevacizumab alone after six cycles if they were stable uh, or had responding disease in order to reduce toxicity and maintain quality of life. We plan to enroll 900 patients in this trial based on our statistical hypotheses and using published data with an estimate of progression-free survival in the paclitaxel and bevacizumab alone arm. We planned interim analyses with a data safety monitoring board to try and evaluate these results periodically that was event driven so that we could close the study early if either one arm appeared significantly superior or if there was an inability based on a futility analysis to demonstrate superiority of the experimental arms to the control. Based on futility analyses, 
and an interim analysis in June of 2011, accrual to the ixabepilone arm was stopped, and the trial became a two-arm trial, comparing nab paclitaxel to paclitaxel. In November of 2011, that arm met its futility endpoint, and the trial was closed to accrual. At that time, 799 patients had been enrolled, and as you can see, relatively more patients were enrolled in the two arms, paclitaxel and nab paclitaxel, because the ixabepilone arm was closed in June. This doesn't, however, affect our conclusions. Although the trial was amended because of the FDA ruling that uh, bevacizumab had lost its approval for treatment of metastatic breast cancer owing to uh, well-understood controversies now, 98% uh, of patients received bevacizumab. We had allowed patients after a time to elect to receive bevacizumab or not with their physicians. The median follow-up for all survival pa surviving patients at the time of our data cutoff was 12 months. And although we allowed men to enroll in this trial, 99% of patients were female, reflecting the incidence of this disease. As you can see, progression-free survival, our primary endpoint for this trial, uh, was superior with paclitaxel compared to ixabepilone. So ixabepilone was significantly inferior to paclitaxel with a hazard ratio of 1.53. The comparison of nab paclitaxel to paclitaxel demonstrated lack of superiority. So nab paclitaxel was not superior to paclitaxel in this comparison, showing a hazard ratio of 1.19, but a non-significant p-value. And for the median progression-free survivals, as you can see at the bottom of this slide, uh, we saw 10.6 months for paclitaxel and bevacizumab, very similar to that observed with ECOG 2100 that looked at the same regimen. NAB paclitaxel was similar at 9.2 months, and ixabepilone was shorter at 7.6 months. There was no difference at this time in overall survival comparing the three arms. We also wanted to look at toxicity comparing these three different chemotherapy agents. As you can see, hematologic toxicity was worse with NAB paclitaxel compared to paclitaxel or ixabepilone. Non-hematologic toxicity was worse with both experimental arms compared to paclitaxel. And if you look at any uh, adverse events, this is uh, muted in the ixabepilone arm because of the decreased hematologic toxicity. We also had a secondary endpoint looking at peripheral neuropathy comparing these two different arms or tingling in the fingertips and toes that can sometimes result in uh, inability to uh, perform the activities of daily living. We saw increased peripheral neuropathy in the experimental arms compared to the control arm as well. So to summarize, in this NCI-supported cooperative group trial, in patients with chemotherapy-naive metastatic breast cancer receiving bevacizumab with this schedule and dose of chemotherapy, neither weekly nab paclitaxel or ixabepilone were superior to weekly paclitaxel. Weekly paclitaxel appears to offer a better progression-free survival than ixabepilone, and hematologic toxicity was greater with nab paclitaxel. Sensory neuropathy was greater in both experimental arms compared to paclitaxel. These data suggest that similar patients could be appropriately treated with weekly paclitaxel. Interestingly, ixabepilone is an apothelone uh, where preclinical and some clinical data suggest an ability to reverse uh, resistance to uh, the microtubule inhibitors like paclitaxel, and NAB paclitaxel has similar data. However, in this chemotherapy-naive population, uh, these results showed equivalency or inferiority. Thank you. <laughs>